The most thorough way to interpret a radar scope is to keep a careful plot of what you see on it. This is how professional mariners and Coast Guard radar observers use radar. In plotting, which is done either on paper or in grease pencil on the scope of the radar, you do a vector analysis of the other boat's maneuvers to see if its course will intercept your course. It's a special skill and it needs some training at navigation schools like this one. But for the average boater, you can do very well with a straight edge, which you lay over the course of the other vessel to see if it will intercept you. The average boater will do best to observe the targets. If the range decreases and the bearing remains constant as here, a risk of collision exists. But if there's no risk of collision, Lay a straight edge across the pips as they move across the scope. This way you can determine the closest point of approach between your boat and the target. If this seems confusing, remember that you are moving as well as your target. What should you do if there's a risk of collision, and how do you avoid collision? Obviously, you're going to have to alter course. The navigation rules are very specific about the obligations of boats in this situation. When you alter course, you must alter course decisively. Rule 8 says, any alteration of course and or speed to avoid collision shall, if the circumstances of the case admit, be large enough to be readily apparent to another vessel observing visually or by radar. A succession of small alterations of course and or speed should be avoided. Tell the other vessel your intentions. The rules specify that certain light and or sound signals be used. It's a good idea to talk to the other boat over the radio. Identify yourself clearly. Describe your course and your intentions and ask for an acknowledgement. Now let's see how a navigator brings together radar, the chart, and on-the-water observations to enter a tricky harbor. Here's the first part of the approach as it's seen on the radar scope. Remember the boat's at the center and the white line shows her heading or the view over the bow. In the upper left hand corner is the range. Here it's one and a half miles. We're heading north and we'll turn east around the lighthouse and around the shallow water marked in blue on the chart. On a dull day like this one or in the evening or early morning, buoys and lighthouses don't appear in much detail. Sometimes all you can make out is their outline. That rocky foundation is called riprap. Stay well clear of it. As the boat turns on a head-up radar display like this one, the heading line stays vertical while the land rotates. This orientation is different from the north-up chart display. Notice how the land seems to blur. Approaching the channel, we search on the scope, the chart, and the water for buoys that will guide us using the rule red, right, returning. In poor light, buoy colors can be pretty bland, but you can tell a can by its flat top and a nun by its pointed top. We move into the channel searching for the pair of buoys, green to port and red to starboard, that define the channel edges and guide us to safe water. Buoys may be small and hard to see. Here a powerboat comes out of the harbor through the channel right at us, and we turn to starboard to pass port side to port side as the rules prefer. 